Empire. Welcome to the latest edition of All's Caps with former Capitals defenseman Carl Lazar. I'm A.P. Hockey writer Steve Wino. I will plug the book right now, uh, Odd Man In, uh, Hockey's Emergency Goalies, and the Wildest One-Day Job in Sports. It is out next week, Carl, uh, Tuesday. I know this is a Capitals podcast. We are going to talk a bunch of Capitals today. Uh, we're going to get to Evgeny Kuznetsov's suspension. We're going to talk, to talk about Bruce Boudreau and the Canucks and the fact that our boy might get fired uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and, and just kind of what's going on with this team. But let's start with Connor Brown. Uh, injured that that right leg knee looked like maybe uh, in that Canucks game uh, out long term with with a lower body injury. Peter Lafayette said, "How much does this hurt not to have Connor Brown now after already not knowing this team's not going to have Nick Backstrom and Tom Wilson for the longest time?" Yeah, it goes back now to, to having a hole again, right? We we kept saying you know all through the summer after that signing that they that Mac did a good job plugging that hole and. And now here it is again, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's super unfortunate, you know, especially since I know I personally had really high hopes for him. And, um, you know, I, so there's a lot of, a lot of pressure that, that comes in uh, when, when people are saying, look, you're going to, you're going to pretty much fill Tom Wilson's spot. And, you know, maybe, maybe he was playing a little bit tight to begin with, you know, it's hard to, hard to play with Ovi sometimes too, because you want to pass him the puck so much because you want yeah. You want Ovi to score, and, um, and instead of just you know taking those opportunities for yourself, but you know, so maybe, maybe a little bit of a tough start, and then this happens. It doesn't doesn't really get any any worse for the player, um, and now for the team as well. So I feel feel terrible for him and and for for the rest of the the squad. But luckily, there's some players that can that can still fill in. You know, a lot of good young young players that that want to prove themselves. So um, this is a good opportunity for them. But man, it. It shows when you don't have a penalty killer like that. Oh yeah, um, in the lineup, uh, especially against a team like Ottawa, that's got some firepower, and you know they, they showed it last night with with scoring those uh, two power play goals. The Senators might be better than we thought, so I got, I, I don't want to turn this into a bad loss. It's just it's it's just you, you're starting to see when you got fast teams how this team is a little slow foot to react to that. Yeah, exactly, and it, I think Ottawa is better than than we all give them credit for. I think um, they're a playoff team. Like I, I, I pray them to make the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think they can. Um, they have some extremely talented players. Like I, I played against Batherson and Norris a, a decent amount when they were in um, uh, whatever the heck that team is there. Belleville, in Belleville, yeah, yeah. In, in, in the minors there, and and they were they were really good then. You know that was that was the focus the focus of our team all the time was make sure we get out against them and and play them hard. So so they got some extremely talented players. So um, you know I I watched uh, a decent amount of that game yesterday and. You know, it, it was just a momentum killer. Penalty after penalty uh, killed the momentum, and and they capitalize on it. Um, so it was it was unfortunate. And uh, you know, we talked about Kemper too. Like he he didn't play bad at all. And no, he, he didn't. Did some unbelievable saves. Uh, that that game could have been even more out of reach. You know, obviously it's take away those empty net goals, but that game could have been even more out of reach if it wasn't for some of the stuff he did out there. So you know, it was it was just it was just bad bad timing um, for injury for. Um, going down on the on the PK, but you know, so many times we say special teams wins these games, and um, although it was a battle, uh, both teams had a good power play. Um, you know, it'd be nice to to find a way to stop those, and when you have one of your best penalty killers out, uh, <laughs> that happens. Yeah, and and Connor Brown and the, on the penalty kill, like that was one of his biggest values. The one good thing is Connor Sherry knows how to move up in the lineup, and and I know he can do a lot of these things. Uh, it it does help to have a guy like that, right? Absolutely, I think I think we said it right, right at the beginning of the year too. He started started out on the the fourth he did. line, yeah. First and and look, he I Connor Sherry's a guy that I just I love watching because I feel like he I feel like he doesn't really get enough credit. Like he is he's so dangerous out there. He just finds a way to get by guys. He's good one on one. He's got a great shot, and he produces when when the team needs him to produce. I think he's a He's definitely a, a, an undervalued player, in my opinion, um, and and he's a very very good utility. Um, can kind of do a little bit of everything. The only knock is is his size, but you know if you play big, which he he does at times, I I don't think it really matters that much. So, you know, another opportunity for him to show what he can do, and uh, and I think he, you know, I, I hope he's going to be able to do that. You brought up Kemper and 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 your boy Charlie Lindgren also in his start, he was great. 
right? I mean, like, I, I know they, I know the Caps lost that game, but he was one of the reasons they were in that game. A hundred percent. Chuck is great. I mean, I'm telling you, he's, 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 he's going to be he, at times. I think everyone's going to watch him and be like, wow, this guy could be, could be the starter. You know, like he has, he has that in him. He's so happy go lucky too. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great partner to have as, as your backup goalie because he is, you know, usually super positive and he's great in the dressing room too. So, um, you know, I believe if, if he plays the way he he did in his start, he's going to be one of the fan favorites <laughs> as a backup goalie, which is sometimes rare. Um, so I, I think that he's got that potential if, you know, anything were to happen with Kemper or the team just needed a different look, you know, he's, he's going to be the guy. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, they're in, they're in a good spot, I think in the net right now, it's just what happens in front of them. It seems to be. Uh, what's going to really help the team? It's 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 a little troubling what's happening in front of them, and I I think we we have to always have the disclaimer on goaltenders when we talk about them that neither one of us is a goaltender about kind of all this, but it's going to be to me fascinating to see how much Scott Murray and Peter Laviolette. I know Kemper has the contract, but if Charlie Lindgren plays the way he played against Toronto, he has to get more than the twenty to twenty five starts that, that that we thought going into the season. Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, it'd be interesting. In I'm not saying 50-50 split. I'm not saying 41-41. Yeah. But I think he's going to get more than than we projected. Well, exactly. And <laughs> I'm curious to know what the conversations are like too. You know, like what does what does Kemper want? You know, as a starting goalie, like how many games do you want to play? You know, what what's he like as a goalie too? You know, if you're if you're going through a slide, do you, does he like to maybe you know, just continue to play through it or right. take some extra time to do? Do a little bit of work with with the coach one on one, and and uh, and you know maybe maybe take a couple games off to work on a few things, right? It's it's something you don't really have the luxury of during the season is to put in a lot of extra time on skill development and and all that stuff because games happen so fast and you're tired and all that stuff, especially as a goalie. Um, so you know, I'm I'm curious what what he's like as as a as a player um, and how he likes to go about that stuff, but. You know, it, it's it's a good it's a good tandem right now. We'll see see how many games Chuck gets in, but but you know, it's just funny. You, know, you, you talked about the book at the beginning there, and, and when you really think about it, sorry, just a, a little bit off top, topic, but we can get off crazy, topic here. It's crazy to think that that an emergency goalie can can go up and and play in a game like that never happens. You think I'm just trying to think about it. Like the goalie is the most important position in hockey, right? Like yep. Think about that as a quarterback. Like imagine you had an an. E- it, it, well, I don't even know how you'd say it. Emergency backup quarterback, e-buck. Yes. <laughs> Imagine like you had that, right? To go in a game, it's, it's uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of, my mind wanders. But that's a, it's a really hard thing to fathom. It, 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 well, it's like you're, you're reading the book now. Because I actually write that. It's like, if Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers get hurt in a game, it's not like there's a Division three quarterback sitting in the stands ready to go in. That, I mean, yeah. that's, that's the equivalent of that. that. That's why it's the wackiest thing. Um, and and, and I, I will say, uh, to tell everyone out there, uh, Aslin Brewing uh, on Wednesday, October 26th, 6 to 9. I'll be there selling the book, signing the book. Uh, and then Irish Channel, Thursday, November 10th, 7 o'clock, big time party. Yes, that's going to be a blast, 100%. And this is a, this is a topic for discussion too because I've, I've, uh, I've had this talk with a guy on my men's league team, uh, Mike. He said, of all the sports – like which one do you think would be the, the easiest one to just jump in and blend in? And he obviously says <laughs> says hockey because he plays hockey and he thinks he could just get out there, you know, get a puck, dump it in if he has to, or or take a hit. And uh, and I would love so much if there was a way. I don't know if you did an <laughs> exhibition, whatever it was. Obviously, there's a lot of insurance that needs to be uh, looked at, but it'd be nice to have, like, not even. Like, I mean, even a semi-pro, like someone who's played, say, college hockey and then took a few years off to try and jump in <clears throat> in a professional sport, you know, and just see how they do. Just it, it's a good it's a good um, reminder, I guess. You talk about it in golf all the time, too. Like, oh, yeah, like get a get a like a good golfer, you know, a low handicap golfer and get them out on the course for in a, in a tournament under under those conditions with fans and media and all that just for a frame of <laughs> reference right i right. think it'd be so so much fun to see someone out there on the ice too you brought up golf did you i mean I, I, you obviously dealt with garrett rank when he was an official did you know he was a, he's a mid-amateur golfer i i did yeah so he i think he's from kitchener area yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm pretty sure weidman actually was the one that uh that mentioned that and and said how good he was um you know i i didn't didn't know exactly how good i, I knew he he's was good yeah, I knew he was up there. Um, so yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty neat to see because, man, that's a 
that's a that's a sport right there that if you don't if you don't play a lot, it's <laughs> insanely hard to be good at. Apparently, and and I heard this story as I was writing about about a uh, rank in 2016. He was playing the the at wing foot. He was playing like a four ball amateur and refing the the Calder Cup and Hershey at the same time. So he was going back and forth, and so he was drying his referee gear out under his car at wing foot, and was worried they were going to ask him not to come back because it's such a fancy club. That's absolutely hilarious. I think people there would have been fired up to hear that that's what was going on. <laughs> yes, but and then, but Hershey Bears obviously in, in the Calder Cup final. Um, oh, and, and Hershey Bears are now back playing again. Uh, our boy Brian Helmer uh, managing that team. Gone now is Matt Molson. Who the guy who got suspended last year is their is their captain now. Oh really? Who I don't even know who that is. This it's is one. My, of, this is one of the. This knowledge. is one of the the guys that. Uh, when they're like, oh, we 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 lost Dylan McElrath. Did you ever play against against McElrath in the in the A or the NHL? Oh, I'm sure I did. Um, look, I've I've never been a, a great uh, you know that great of a, a student of the game where I remember all the guys and and their and their abilities. Um, but I, I'm sure I, I know the name, so I'm I'm sure I did at some point. But um, but yeah, that's I, I mean. Hershey is such a such a sweet place to play. If you can get over the fact that there isn't really a ton to do outside of the rink, it's a great great hockey town. It's a great minor league hockey town. Yes, absolutely, and it's really fun to you know. As much as it does suck to dress and drive, which for anyone who uh, doesn't know what that is, it's oftentimes when your when your rink is is taken or it's got a concert or something going on, the players will put on half their gear or almost yep. all of their <clears throat> gear and then hop on the bus and. And uh, and get driven to another rink, or get into your car and go somewhere else. And and it's a funny story. We had, we did that one time. Uh, well, we did it lots of times in Hershey, but one time in particular, where we were a little bit late for uh, practice. Me and Carly were driving together, and Ashton Rome and I can't remember who was with him. We're driving in another car, and we were all four of us were a little late, and so we were buzzing to get to uh, practice in Hershey. And uh, we both got pulled over by the cops for speeding. And <laughs> And of course, <laughs> none of us, none of us had a wallet on us because we had our full hockey gear on. And so we, we got pulled over. A cop asked for all of our ID, ID and stuff, and asked what the heck was going on. Why were we wearing our gear? And, and luckily, we got bailed out because uh, you know it's Hershey and and uh, and hockey is is kind of king there. But it was it was so funny. I couldn't imagine as a cop pulling up to a car and seeing four guys wearing hockey gear driving the car. Unbelievable! You guys did this for in in Raleigh too. I remember this was maybe twenty twelve summer twenty thirteen when they had that old practice rink. You guys did the dress and dry from PNC. Yeah, we've we've we did it in Raleigh. We do it in Florida um, sometimes. Uh, it happens more than you think. Calgary, the Flames do it quite often, I believe. I I, I don't know if they have figured something out there, but um, yeah, you'd be surprised at how many times you have to do that. And it's not it's not all that fun, especially after practice when you have to. Uh, right. You have to go home in your gear, and it's soaking wet. And if it's cold out, and if it's middle of the winter, um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of brutal. But you know, it it uh, it brings you down a peg every now and then, which is which is needed it, in it, professional sports. It's very much not the glamorous part of the 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 fl- the, the first cl- the charter flights and all that. No. <laughs> then you've got the other side of the, the dress and drive, which is a very hockey thing. Uh, when we come back on all caps, we're going to talk about Evgeny Kuznetsov suspension, uh, a little more about kind of how this team is playing right now, and Ovi, and later we're going to get to Bruce Boudreau and the Canucks, who the Capitals beat here, came back to beat here in Washington, and, and what might be the be the fate of Bruce Boudreau in Vancouver. Welcome back to All's Caps with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner. I'm AP Hot Carter, Steve Wynum. We were just talking, like, mid-recording about ice in the D.C. area and how hard it is to get. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, it would be nice to have, like, a million more rinks in D.C. <laughs> this million, is totally yeah. off-topic, and we'll get, we'll get to Evgeny Kuznetsov, but, like, it would be nice to have a few more rinks in the D.C. area just as you're trying to grow youth hockey and grow people playing around here, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a conversation I'm, I'm having right now um, about... Well, Reston. Uh, I was I was there last weekend <clears throat> at the with the Learn to Play program, and and they had I don't even know at least probably more than sixty kids out on the ice, and and I'm, what I'm hearing is they have to turn kids away and stuff too. And uh, I, as far as I know, Reston, the Reston Raiders are are have been one of the best programs around for quite a few years. And um, just just to give people an example, like like here there there is a few two rink. Ice surfaces, I, or, like, like like MedStar, where like, the capitals like are. Like MedStar, yeah, exactly. Where they have, they'll have two two sheets. Um, St. James is another one. Yep. Um, but 
But where I grew up, literally 10 minutes from my house, there was a, there's a place called Eight Rinks. And that's all it is. It's eight rinks above the above them, right in the middle. There's a bit of a restaurant and bar, and and there's a gym that they that they started with physiotherapy and stuff like that. And you could just pump teams through this practices, games, all that stuff. And then 20 minutes away, there was another one called called GPF, Great <clears throat> Pacific Forum, that had four rinks. You know, perfect dressing rooms, just straight hockey. You know, that's all it was. And uh, and I, you know, I think it's one of the things that this area really could use, you know, rested in particular with how many players there are, it's super central and, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice to, to try and get that going. I know having an ice rink isn't the most lucrative, um, business venture. It but... can be because <clears throat> ice is expensive. I mean, I, I know ice is expensive to maintain, but ice yeah. time is expensive. <clears throat> it, it is expensive, but the whole point would be to, to build it and then, and then have access for players yeah. that want to play right like it's expensive gear is expensive oh yeah you no know, uh being being a part of a team is expensive um so you know the more the more availability the better because i think we'll be able to grow it and it's it's already starting but, but yeah it, it's something that we're, we need to work on yeah and, and that, that's one of like the barriers to to the sport i know the nhl put out it kind of its diversity report very like unsurprisingly most of the league's employees are white and one of the the ideas is you have to get k- people in underserved communities knowing that hockey is welcoming to them and some some of it is the cost some of it is literally just you can't find ice time you can't have a, get equipment and so kids want to play other sports and that sort of thing i don't know i, I don't i don't want to get too off topic uh <laughs> getty kuznetsov was suspended uh the one game for the high sticking he just two-handed the guy <clears throat> i can't blame the league for saying he's got to get suspended for a game i don't think i never thought it was gonna be more than one game but i i, I understand it yeah I, I understand it too it's even it, nick, nick had one like that in the playoffs against against Boston. Yeah. You look, you get <laughs> caught up sometimes and, and you, you just want to, you want to react and you want to get a little bit of payback. And it's so hard to tell yourself not to. And when you have a stick in your hand too, it's like, yep. yeah, like, this is easy. Like, let's just give them a quick whack here. And then you, you hit too hard, you hit in the wrong spot, you know, or a guy, a guy, you know, moves a little bit. And next thing you know, you got him in a, in a really bad spot versus a shin pad or something like that. Like it, it happens. You know, I've, I threw a couple elbows at guys just because I wanted to get a piece of them and uh you know got ended up getting them in the face you know it's just it's not exactly what you're trying to do um but it happens and you have to work so hard to tell yourself you know, like let's just wait take a number and try and try and look for it later uh instead of instead of reacting in the moment because that's that's when the refs are watching right they're, they're waiting yeah. for something like that it's that's prime time <laughs> so you got to be sneaky about it if you want to go after somebody and and get them in the right spot at the right time so yeah it's it's not really that surprising and apparently Kuzi did say in his hearing, like he wasn't trying to hit him in the face. He was just trying to, he was trying to give him kind of a jab. And like, and, and if that happens, it's a jab to the shoulder. It might be a cross check or something like that, but it's not high sticking. And it's not a suspension. Well, that's exactly it, right? That's, you know, he wasn't, you know, not, not trying to get a guy in the face. Like, I think it's, <laughs> it's incredibly rare that, that you, you're like, you know what? I'm going to get this guy right in the head here. Let's get him. Let's, let's whack him over the, it's over not the intentional. Head. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's just it's just unfortunate that that's what happens, and and it and it does happen. It happens often where you where you get someone in a way worse spot than you're than you're hoping to. Yeah, and 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 I know he lost a little money in salary, and and the Caps lose this game. They, this team needs Evgeny Kuznetsov. And remember last year when Nick was out, Ovi and and, and Kuzi were the team's best players. If they can get back in sync, it's going to solve a lot of problems. One hundred percent. That's uh, we we've said that it's uh, the usually the way teams go is how their how their top <laughs> players go right and and they they absolutely took over everything at the beginning of the year and, and oh, yeah. put them in a, in a great position and so if they're not going then then you know this is what we see we see five hundred hockey um, your best players put you over the top yeah. and so you know they they will hopefully at some point um, you know if it doesn't take too long but. Uh, but yeah, they, they if if you don't have if you don't have Nick in the lineup and you don't have uh, Tom out there, uh, it it just makes things so much harder. And there's way too many good players in the league right now to to not have have some of your own that are that are matching them um, play for play, like just like with Ottawa Batherson and 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 uh, yeah, watching him in Buffalo too, you know. Darlene and Tuck and those guys like when darlene has been ridiculous by the he's way. He's been ridiculous. Yeah. I, I I still remember watching his his clips when he was 17 and and doing what he was doing out there and I I thought that it was maybe like an exhibition game that he's doing these things. But no, they they're they're regular games and just goes out there and and challenges players one-on-one and and plays the game. So it it's pretty crazy, but you know, back to the caps, it's 
it is uh, imperative that those guys be the best players every single night, or at least 90% of the time. And a road trip next week will be a test for this team before coming home and playing the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, when we come back, a little Caps adjacent talk uh, about the, the Canucks comeback and also what could be happening sooner than later, unfortunately, to Bruce Boudreaux. Welcome back to All's Caps, the former Capitals heads and Carl Osner. I'm making hockey writer Steve Wino. Um, it's some Caps adjacent talk now, I guess, with Bruce Boudreaux. And, and the Capitals did have an impressive comeback to beat the Canucks the other night. Down two goals in the third period. Dylan Strom gets them going. Uh, John Carlson scores a, a big goal. Connor Sherry scores a big goal. Ovi adds a, a second of the night to, to beat the Canucks. But the Canucks are just in a bad way for Bruce Boudreaux right now. And as I was, try- I was saying, Carl, I'm worried that Bruce Boudreaux is going to get fired in Vancouver sooner than later. Yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't really realize it was um, you know this this immediate you know that it, that something could happen you know it's oh three they, and two they were the only yeah. team in NHL history to blow multi goal leads in each of the four, first four games and lose them all. Yeah, exactly. And so so diving into that, like what what it, what is that? You know, they, they obviously ha- are they obviously have the ability to go up in these games and and be leading and chances to win. Um, so so what is that? Is that a coaching error that they're unable to? play through that is that a is that a player you know mentality issue where they're just kind of take the foot off the gas and and stop stop playing they're a little too comfortable i i don't know i i i feel bad that uh that his his head is on the chopping block right now but you know bruce is like he's the the he's the second highest win percentage as a coach in history right next to to yes. scotty bowman right he's 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 one of the best coaches that that we have ever seen anyone who plays for him um, I think I think would agree that he is awesome to play for. Although you know, like all coaches, has has moments where you you just want to say you know screw off. I don't want to listen to you. Every but boss is like that. Like for, every, <laughs> every once in a while. Exactly. But he is he's such a good coach, and I don't think you want to you know I don't think you want to just just say bye to to someone that has that resume without trying to give them a chance to to break out of it right but like you had said there there's there's been a bit of a uh, a shift in management yeah and that's the thing is that Jim Rutherford hired Bruce Boudreau and then Patrick Alvine comes in as GM and hire and, and kind of there's a little more analytics direction of, of the front office there and Bruce Boudreau only signed a two-year contract it was like a, really a one and an option and there were a bunch of openings in the, around the league last year and unfortunately there was nothing no one called for for, for Bruce so he said why well, I'm going to coach this year he is one win short of 600. Only yeah. 21 other coaches in NHL history have ever won 600 games. He's phenomenal. He is phenomenal, and it would be an absolute shame if they don't let him at least get that get that opportunity to get the win, right, and get to 600. Because uh, Bruce has done it, done it in in the NHL and the American League. He's he's done it all. Like he is, he's so decorated, and and I think he's such a a, a fan favorite for so many people too. Which you know, coaches. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many coaches that become fan favorites as well. Usually, it's the players, but. But yeah, I I don't know. I it w- it would be a shame, but you know he did so, so many good things for that uh, team last year that at least uh, at least everybody got to see some positivity. Let me give you my dream scenario right now. <laughs> Bruce Bruce gets fired in Vancouver. He sit he sits at home for a month. The Leafs fire Sheldon Keefe, hire Bruce, and he wins the Stanley Cup in Toronto and is an absolute hero. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, right? And then just ride off into the sunset after that. I no, coach for be... another five years after that. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You win a cup at at, at his age with his resume. Uh, you might as well just pack it in. Uh, I just, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I talk to players on the Canucks about him. I, I've known Bruce for the, the longest time. You've obviously known Bruce for the longest time. He, I, I think that the blowing leads is a mental thing. The one thing I've said always about him in the playoffs and his teams is their the players get tight if he's tight. Like if he's yeah. tight behind the bench, you, you guys feel it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And and um, look, I. I have nothing but good things to say about Bruce. I've I've heard of some scenarios where, you know, and and I and I saw him also where, you know, he's he he's trying to play, you know, an, a bit of a an X's and O's game, a little bit not not a mind game, but you know, he's trying to think the game another step. And and uh, you know, when you see another team all of a sudden switch, for example, like the two best players that are normally on a line together, let's let's go with uh, like Detroit, you know, having having. Uh, Datsuk and Zetterberg be split up on 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 a line, and then all of a sudden you split up. Uh, I don't know, like Getzlaff and Perry, just to match what they're doing, versus having one power line of right. Getzlaff and Perry. <laughs> you know, things like that, where 
um, you know, the, the players notice that, you know, and I'm not just saying Bruce in particular, a lot of, a lot of coaches do this where they're trying to play the other team's game sometimes. And that's when, that's when, that's when you notice it as a player, like, well, why is, why is coach doing this? Like this has been working for us all the time. Why are we switching now to play like the other team? Right. So I think that's where, where a coach can sometimes get a little bit tight. Understandably they're, they, they're trying to coach the game, but, but uh, I think Bruce is best when he, he does what he wants to do because his game plan is, is the best and, and let's not beat ourselves. Um, and I think when he coaches that way, the, the teams are always so good. I think it's pretty clear. This podcast is, is fans of Bruce Boudreau and the <laughs> Bell Center hot dogs, right? Like I, if, if we stand for anything, we stand for that. Hot dogs and, and breakfast foods. Yes, that's that's where we go. And and, and Bruce Boudreau. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to the latest edition of All's Caps. Some more book talk next week. I, I hope everyone enjoys it. I, I think I'm going to try to get Brett Lee and Hart Stretch uh, on the show. Uh, we have plenty of other guests who want to get on the show at some point, too. Uh, we'll talk to you next week on All's Caps.